dead. I'm dead. Calm down, Velvet. This farce is just another of Venomenot's illusions. Farce? How callous. That farce is the true face of my sister. <sighs> she hates, resents, devours, and kills. She tramples people, cities, everything, living only by her emotions. What an ugly, tainted soul. It's not like that! Nothing you say will matter. She knows. She knows if it's the truth. He's right. Just think. Everything I did was baseless. Arrogant. And even so, I still... You hurt so many innocent people, didn't you? More than I can count. I devoured and killed so many. Without even knowing Arthur's true aims. I destroyed people. I destroyed whole towns. And worse yet, you didn't even show mercy to your own sister's reincarnation. I... And despite all of that, I still love you, Velvet. That's why I chose to become a sacrifice for you, sister. But think, if you try to stop the resurrection, wouldn't my death be all for nothing? To tell you the truth, I was terrified of dying. It was so dark. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You'll accept it then? That everything you've done up until this point, all of it. Yes. It was all for nothing and for no one. I hurt so many people, all for no reason. I'm a monster. If you've accepted it, you have to atone for your sins. Once I eat the final two malevolences inside you, I'll fully awaken. Give them to me. Give me your hatred, your despair. If you do, I can cleanse this world of all its pain. I had hoped that you could live in a world without pain and sadness. But you're a monster now. You don't belong there. Velvet! Let me go. We have to go. If you don't, you will die too for no reason. No! A twisted monster like me doesn't deserve to live. Don't you understand? You're the reincarnation of the first sacrifice. Part of me. Don't worry, I'll devour you too. Luffy <laughs> said. Tell this self-absorbed idiot what she needs to hear! Please... Let me go... Will you stop whining?! Huh? No, I don't understand! You snap at people! You're scary! You... You tried to eat me! But... You're also kind! And you're filled with life! I don't understand a single thing about you! <sighs> but you gave me a name! When I was a number! You gave me that compass! You taught me what it meant to be alive! That's why I care about you, Velvet! I'll protect you for my own sake! She... I don't care if you're malevolent or if it was pointless! If the world says it's a mistake to love you, I'll fight the whole world! I don't care how much pain you feel! It doesn't matter! A world without you, Velvet! Is the one thing I couldn't bear! Let me go! My hand will... 
I loved them all. I loved Luffy, and Celica, Arthur, everyone. To have it all stolen from me. Why them? Why not? A flame burns in my heart, too. A flame I cannot quench no matter how hard I try. Just like you, Velvet. I finally understand how you felt. But the only one I can fight for is myself. That's good enough. That's proof that you are truly alive. How many times do you plan to destroy and rebuild your own heart, Magilu? We're on a hundred and seven. Or was it a hundred and eight? I lost count. Not that I really care. Pathetic fool. Did I not tell you it would require an iron will as indomitable as the very trees that live and die across millennia? Like you, I suppose. Or that boy over there. That is the foundation of an ideal world. One free from man's sins. <laughs> An ideal world, huh? You, kid. The boy who was your companion, Laffy said. He's alive. Chasing a terrifying demon girl, he has learned the immensity of the seas and weathered the dry wastes of the land. Those people, they're different from us. Despite the pain, the anguish, they embrace the life they've been given. They live undaunted by the ugliness of the world! <gasps> so you're doing this all for them? Is that what this is? <laughs> Not even close. They aggravate me to my wit's end. <laughs> like stabs in the chest, over and over and over. And that's exactly why. That's why I intend to see how all of this ends. I won't be satisfied until I do. Words bereft of meaning. You truly are my greatest failure. Gosh, funny just how little I care. No! Please! Let me guess. We came at a good time? You're late. Because of you, I had to have a really boring conversation. So, you came face to face with Inominat. If so, 
Then you must know that your quest for revenge is utterly meaningless. Yeah, I did. I know why sadness fills the world, and I know how deep are the burdens of sin. I tried to abandon my memories of Arthur and Laffy, to cut myself off from it all, and end this tragedy. It's... it's what they would have wanted. Exactly. You do well to know your place. But that's exactly why I can't forgive them. Not Artorius, not Enominot. I know my heart is ugly and full of contradictions. But those days we spent together in familial warmth, they're proof that I, that all of us, were truly alive. That's why, no matter how hard, no matter how sad it gets, I will take my vengeance to the very end! Stop it! Don't be a fool! Just give up and die like you ought! It is your destiny to wallow in despair! You take my family, turn me into a monster, and you want my soul too? Now who's being the fool? Remember this well. The Lord of Calamity never gives up, not even in the face of death. Have you no shame for your sins, you unholy monster? <laughs> Let me in on this. I lost a bet and I've got some anger to work out. You sure you can fight in your condition? I thought you'd never ask. I am the dastardly witch Magi Lu, scourge of self-righteous exorcists! Now face the wrath of Magi Lu Maven! Fools, all of you! A dragon! Everyone, sorry to have worried you. I wasn't worried. I didn't realize you were someone who needed looking at you. This is our way of saying we trust you. Yeah. You horrible infray! See? Stabbed in the chest. That's all you give me. Tell Artorius and Enominot. They took something precious from me. I'll never forgive them for that. The annals of history are stained with evil people like you. You spread havoc and destruction all to satisfy your own ends. A dark font of malevolence. You're a demon lord. The irredeemable embodiment of sin! The Lord of Calamity. It is the Exorcist's duty to destroy you! You talk a lot. How about you keep talking and tell us where Ifrid is? You'll regret this. I can feel he know me not. He's coming! We can fight here no longer! The Enfu! Close the rift! I can't! Come forth! <laughs> Carelessness will get you killed. Zavid! <sighs> you ruined the moment. Huh? Don't you mean, thanks for saving us, Zavid? You're my hero and role model. Thank you for saving us, Savid. Where exactly are we now? 
We're in an Abbey facility on Hexen Isle. I heard Melchior was in charge here, so I snuck in. I hadn't expected an extra-dimensional space. Is there a way out? There is now, that I busted my way in. Let's head outside. We can talk then. Uh... Who's that? A friend. His name is number one. Hey, wanna come with us? If you stay here alone, a dragon might get you. I bet you wouldn't like that. Yeah, that sounds scary. Great! Come on, kid. What are you doing? We can't leave him like this. I'll get him a vessel, somehow. <sighs> Do what you like. You seem awfully chipper, Velvet. I'm fine. And I guess I have you to thank as well. Perhaps. But gratitude doesn't suit you. Now, say, ah! Uh... Huh? I need to see your teeth! I made a hundred gold bet that you'd break, remember? So, I need to see if you've broken anything. Help us out, kiddo. All right. I just need to check our front teeth, right? Front teeth, canines, whatever. You didn't mean that literally, did you? Why are you making me do the checking? Acting the innocent maiden, are we? Well, I suppose that some say that showing the inside of your mouth can be more personal than being seen naked. What? Seriously? Mogilu, you're only making this even more awkward. Come now, will you cooperate or not? We can't settle the bet until we know the tooth! Fine, but well, let's check the ones in my left hand first. Good, I believe Bienfu can assist with that. Why me? Leave me out of this! Bien! She's squeezing me! Ouch! Those fangs hurt! <laughs> Looks like Velvet is just fine. Yeah, the sparks returned to her eyes. But, uh, is showing the inside of your mouth really that embarrassing? What? Keep your intrusive questions to yourself! The size of the art that created this place. Just what is the Abbey planning to use it for? Whatever it is, they're trying hard to keep it hidden. Can't be anything good. Hey, who was that kid anyway? He and I used to be tethered to an exorcist named Lady Teresa. He was number one, I was number two. Oh, -ho, a friend of yours then. So he went feral after that Teresa lady fell. Yeah. I found Velvet and the others, but he probably had nowhere to go. A stray Moloch stripped of his free will won't go much further than a demon's belly. Anyway, seems like the only people I run into these days are kids. I'm more in the market for an unattached woman with a pretty face. Um, sorry? <laughs> I'm just fooling around. Anyway, relax. Just one more reason to bring the Abbey down. Right. Thanks, Savid. Hey, Luffy said, can you think of a good name for the kid? You're giving number one a name? Yeah. He says he can't remember his true name, and calling him by a number seems mean, you know? Yeah. I was really happy when Velvet gave me my name. Hey, I've got this. How about Hajime? It means the first, and he's number one, right? In that case, why not just go with Ichiro? No way. That was Shigure's childhood name. Why should that matter to us? It should be softer. How about Ichi? Or maybe something like Numbi? Numbi? Where'd that one come from? It's like number, but, uh, more cute. Let's just forget that one. I don't think we should reference his old number at all. Um, how about Bob? Uh... Is that just because of his hairstyle? 
That's really reaching. Actually, I kind of like it. If it's too plain, how about Bobby? Hmm. That isn't bad. Right? Then number one is hereby renamed... Stop it, you two! You don't understand it at all! A boy doesn't want a name that sounds cute! You... you don't think so? That was quite an outburst. <laughs> the kid has a point. How about Silva? Silva? His hair and pendant are both silver. I like it. It's got a certain mystique about it. Silva. Yeah, it sounds cool. Well, if his old buddy Laffy said approves, then Silva it is. Well done, first mate. Praise from you is wasted on me. Huh. <laughs> then consider it praise from Silva instead. Right. Time to go give him the good news. Hey! The Moloch formerly known as Number One. You've got a new name. I'm glad he got a good name. Maybe we should have put a little more thought into naming you, too. That's all right. You need to steer your own ship. Right, Aizen? You're the one who taught me that. <laughs> you know just what to say, don't you? <laughs> Magilu, what were you up to while we were lost in the Earth Pulse? I was ringing the bell. I don't remember hearing any bells. She was fighting with Lord Melchior! Panfu, don't give him the wrong impression. But you endured so much! Yes, yes, I did endure. It was so hard not to laugh. Did the old man tell you a joke or something? It was a staring contest, and oh, the faces that old man can make. I kept picturing him as a young man, but with that same wrinkled face, and it was so hard not to crack. <laughs> I needed to keep myself in check. My desire to laugh was only broken by the ringing of the bell. Clang! Crash! What a thrill! Wait, was that the only thing that broke Mogilu? Are you asking if he broke my heart? Like I'm fishing for sympathy? That's not what I meant at all! You stood watch over the Earth Pulse Rift for us. I didn't say that. Stop trying to give me a participation medal. Just take it. After all, you don't care either way, right? True that. A dragon! It looks like it's been captured. Just like the Therians. But why would they hold a dragon captive? Hmm. An art connects this place to the Earth Pulse. Earth Pulse. So it's got something to do with the Nomi Knot? That would be the obvious conclusion. I don't get it. Explain. Small words. Very well. You're part of all this, too. Velvet. I'm fine now. I promise. All right. I see. You found out Inominat's true identity. So, now that you know, can you still fight him? It's only given me more reason to kill him. And the Shepherd. You're one ice-cold girl. There's still one thing bothering me. Inominat needs to eat Malevolence to awaken. Once he does, he'll use his power to suppress negative emotions. But when humans can't create any more Malevolence, what will happen to Inominat? He'll run out of things to eat. And maybe die? Hmm. Wouldn't he just go back to sleep? But if he does, then his power will fade and humanity will start creating malevolence again, right? In order for Inomi not to eternally suppress negative emotions... He needs an infinite, powerful source of malevolence to feed off of. For example, that produced by an immortal dragon. Which would make this place a sort of dragon farm. Created so he could control humanity forever. You can't be serious! Just speculation, but it all... They can't think of Malakim as anything but tools. Just how much will they sacrifice for their ideal world of tranquility? We don't dare free it. It'd be too dangerous. I know. Damn the Abbey and their twisted morality. Velvet, 
What is it? I was once your sister's child, right? Then my father is... Look, you were reborn, right? Yeah. Honestly, I really don't know anything about how being reborn works. But to me, what you see, what you hear, and what you feel, that's what's important. Whoever we used to be in another life, I'm me now, and you're you. That's all there is to it. Velvet. That's true. Aizen said that not all Malakim are humans who have been reborn, right? Does that mean they could be reincarnations of birds or fish or beasts? That's not, 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 not true! So, if a boy was a dog in a past life, that wouldn't make him part of the dog's family now. Yeah. I'm me, I guess. But you're Velvet's cute little pup, aren't ya? Mogilu. Be careful. I bite. Oh, have mercy! I take it all back, just don't bite me! Rebirth is like the Earth in Historia. You're simply built on a larger foundation. But that's not special. Everyone's lives are founded on the past. So, I'm just me. Yep, you're you and no one else. You're Fee. I came here by ship. It's anchored by the southeast beach. 